Hello. Here I am inside on a warm, cosy evening. And I'm going to attempt to do another one of these little chats. But be warned, there are cats about. There's one over there. There's one just jumped off my knee. I'm going to try and wind this wool that I spun the other day and chat to you guys, whoever's listening. It's nice. I've had a couple of, um, um, well, more than a couple of friendly bits of encouragement to carry on doing these uh, little um, little chats. And um, I have to say that, um, let's get this sorted out. This is what I was spinning the other day. Uh, probably, uh, no, not the blue. I was spinning the blue, wasn't I? Uh, I've got a neighbour knot there. Let's find the end of this and then I can concentrate. Because talking and it requires a lot of concentration. There, that'll do. There's an end. And so uh, I took the iPad, because I do these on my little iPad, to the top of the hill opposite where I live on Sunday. And, and I did a whole chat, chat a I don't need glasses on for this part. From the top of the hill, looking back down to the house. But then when I, 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 looked, I looked back at it, the wind was howling a gale and you couldn't hear a single thing I was saying. So I thought I'd sit and wind this wool and talk about what I was talking about up at the top of the hill. Uh, I'll talk about it now. Uh, and it's um, it's an explanation of why I say, oh, let's have another Last Homely House chat. It's an explanation of why this place is called the Last Homely House or the Last Homely House East of the Sea. And um, yeah, I thought I'd tell you why I call it that. My Instagram feed is called that. My... Um, if I had a Facebook page, it would be called that. I'm working on that. But this YouTube channel is definitely called that. And for those of you who know it's from Tolkien, uh, it's um, it's from uh, The Hobbit, in fact. I'm a big fan of Tolkien, and not just since the films, although I do like the films. I liked the books very much when I was growing up. The Hobbit was one of the first books I read to myself. We didn't have many books growing up uh, you know we just didn't have them but I went to the library and so on and I think it was I remember it was my cousin Michael who gave me the Hobbit he gave it to my dad and said give this to her she'll really enjoy it and I did and then of course the Lord of the Rings was a big leap up from the little children's story which was the Hobbit but I loved the world I love authors who create worlds for us to inhabit and so I've really loved um Philip Pullman's um, Dark Materials books, fabulous world of um, um, demons uh, and which are our souls manifest as animals. It's a fantastic world, parallel universes. I love all of that. And all the Harry Potter stuff, I've really you know, got caught up in, in the storytelling around that. But the, the, the reason why this place, this house that I've lived in for over 30 years now, the reason why I call it the last homely house east of the sea, it's for this little quote, and I've got it here on my phone for you, for you to listen to. And Tolkien called the last homely house, it's actually where the elves live in Rivendell. And so, you know, Rivendell, elves, it's all a little bit fanciful, isn't it? But listen to the description of what the last homely house is. And here it is. Uh, Frodo was now safe in the last homely house east of the sea. The house was, as Bilbo had long ago reported, a perfect house, whether you liked food or sleep or storytelling or singing or just sitting and thinking best or a pleasant mixture of them all. Now, I like that because that's what I'm creating here in this comfortable home. It's somewhere where I feel all of those things, but also I hope my visitors come and, and pick up a sense of that. So I've lived in this house over 30 years and it's changed 
enormously in all of that time. Um, I live in it here on my own now, but it has been home to my children growing up and it's been quite an interesting place in the way that it's developed and changed and and so these past few years that it's just been me here I've changed so many things the colors of the walls the curtains the way it's laid out everything about it now is I hope is described by by that little description from Tolkien the last homely house east of the sea it's a bit fanciful and if you hate it I'm sorry but I am actively creating a place where I hope people feel nurtured and welcome. So this last year, um, the house is how I want it now, but this last year uh, I've been creating the garden that I want uh, to have. Um, I'm a sort of a... What kind of a gardener am I? I'm an enthusiastic gardener and I'm very willing to learn. I haven't got a huge amount of physical energy to do much in the garden, but I've got a lot of willingness. And so this year, it's also quite a big garden. Uh, if you looked at that, uh, um, that little um, beautiful evening light video that I put up, uh, the last uh, one, I think. Ah, I'm in a tangle. No, it's all right. Um, where I was showing you, apart from the very, very beautiful autumn light on the trees in what I call the front woods. Uh, but I was showing you, wasn't I, some bits of the really wild area where the hens live and the goose. And what I haven't yet shown you, and I will when we have, have another beautiful sunny day, I'll take you into the garden and I'll show you all the things that have been happening in the garden this year. Um, it's a big space, I'll show you, uh, when it's, cause it's dark now. So what I did this year was I, um, I invited some international students to come and stay. Uh, it, it's a project called Work Away. You may have heard of woofing or help exchange uh, work away is another one like that where you register your project uh, on the internet and then all sorts of people say yes I'd like to come um, and they come you put them up you give them nice food uh, hopefully nice food uh, no, I had no complaints about the food and then in return they work uh, in your garden uh, or whatever your project is uh, for, well, in my case, I set it up so that there were four groups of people coming for two weeks for four months. That sounds like a, a, a manageable thing to do. It didn't work out like that at all. Because with people arriving early and leaving late and liking it and staying on, I actually had people here from May right through to the end of August. Uh, lots of different people from Spain, Italy, France, uh, from um, Poland, Japan, uh, some from this country. And um, the jobs that were done in the garden, it was phenomenal, the amount of work that we got done in the garden. It was absolutely brilliant. All with um, Mark, who is the gardener that I pay uh, to come and help in my garden. Uh, he came and helped project manage it all. So without him, uh, it definitely wouldn't have worked because um, he he and I thought through the projects that I wanted to do. And I always find that when you meet with a creative person like Mark is, one and one equals far more than just two. And so quite a lot of the things that happened in the garden were his idea and they were good ideas. So they were all uh, students or, yeah, exclusively students. Uh, who um, it's a good way to see the world. I made sure that they, I hope I did anyway, had an interesting time of seeing some of the local Starth Hadrian's Wall and the coast and uh, Newcastle and places that they wanted to see. And uh, and like I say, uh, I, I made food. Uh, some of them made food for me, which was fantastic. 
So Agnieszka made me beautiful Polish food. And uh, what Claire and Megan, the girls from France and Yolanda, they just made me fantastic food. The food was very good the weeks that they were here. And so when I have daylight, uh, I'll show you around the garden and I'll show you some of the projects they did uh, in yeah the whole of this summer. It was amazing. Really, really amazing. Um, and so, yeah, if you're interested. So I'm going to say now, if you're interested, press subscribe and the little bell, which will notify you when I update another video, which I'm going to do every now and then. Um, I'm going to try and keep them to 10 minutes. And this one's already nearly 11 because uh, I think 10 minutes is about right. So I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Nearly um, wound all this brown wool on. This is for, um, it's for uh, a secret knitting project that I'm doing, which will be a Christmas present. So thanks for watching if you have, and I'll try and keep these videos a bit shorter. And um, great, see you maybe next time. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye.